Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part 9 of the processing tutorial. In part 8, we started learning about arrays and for loops. And the objective was to take this program and give it a whole bunch more balls that were bouncing around, or as many as we'd like, really. And to do that, we first looked here and created these balls that were just drawn on the screen. And remember that each pair here x, y pair is one ball on the screen. So there's 100 and 100 and then 50 and 150 and then 10 and 70 and then 80 uh, and, a, and 100 and so on. And we learned that instead of creating a whole bunch of x's and a whole bunch of y's, we could shorten it all into an array. So this x actually is storing all of this information somewhere in memory. And this y has all access to all of these numbers. And by using a for loop, we can loop through these a pair at a time and use them in our program. So index 0, 0, and if you remember, arrays start at index 0 and go up to whatever number we have. Now, there's slight confusion because we would say that this array has three values or three elements, but to get to the third element, we actually look at index 2. Okay, so you have to think about that because later on we're going to use array length and that is a, a method or a function that gives you how many elements are in here total and then it doesn't really give you the highest index, it just tells you the highest number of values or elements. So in this case just remember if you have three elements, you the highest index is two. If you have 100 elements, the highest index is 99. And that's because we're including 0 as an index. All right, so this program here, we're going to take some of this, and we're going to go back here, and we're going to implement what we need to. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my x's, and I'm going to take my y's that I made last time, and I'm going to put them inside this program. And that means I'm going to have to delete this, and I'm going to have to delete that. All right, I'm going to leave these here for now, and we're going to come back, and we're actually going to make an X delta array and a Y delta array, but we're going to next put in the loop. So I'm going to take this loop, and I'm going to take this, I'm actually take this whole thing, and I'm going to copy it over to here. All right, so I'm going to delete this ellipse now. So what we're doing now is we're just drawing these. Okay, so these will be drawn, and these actually, nothing is going to happen with these, and I can't even run the code right now, because X, I've changed it into an array. So let's just see this program first by uh, commenting out some things here so it doesn't run. Now, if you remember what a comment is, a comment is something that you can still see code, or you can see something you've written, but it doesn't actually run as uh, as part of the code anymore and I'm going to show you I showed you last time how to do this how just one comment is one line thankfully there's a, a shortcut to comment many many lines so I can highlight all of these at once I can go edit and I can use comment or uncomment and the shortcut for that is holding down the control button and pressing the slash so if I highlight all this and hit control slash, it'll comment all of these out. And if I do that, I'll now be able to run the program. And you'll notice that I have these five balls in here that I had before. And these five balls are, are, are being drawn using fill, stroke, and weight here. So I remember all these balls have the, the same fill, stroke, and weight. I'm going to move this ball a little bit over to the right just so it's not up against the wall make it instead of 10 I'll make it 20 so this ball is a little off the wall I think that may cause problems later all right so in this case I have I'm drawing all of them and this looks good because it uses the arrays that we had before and as I said you can add things to this and you could probably put well you can put more balls on here so if I say 100 and 400 I will make a, a new ball at oops should make me a new ball there. 100 over, 400 down. Should draw just fine. 100 over, why is it? Oh, yeah, sorry. We need to add one more here. So this member, now I've, 
I've made there's six elements in the array, so I need to change my for loop as well. So if I change this, it'll change the for loop. And we're going to learn a, a better way to do this so I don't have to come here and change this value over and over again. So you can add as many of these as you want right now and follow along just fine. Nothing. If you add more on here, just make sure you add a pair because this is expecting there to be an index at i for, for x and an index at y for i as well. So it's actually, actually saying check this one and make sure there's one also at the same index here. If I were to make this here and add one more x value, that's okay as long as I don't try to read that x value. So now I say, hey, I've got seven things in here, so let's bump this up to seven. Well, it will get to y and say, hey, there's nothing matching for y, so please put something in there. And if I do, then I'll get another ball on the screen. So now I have seven balls on the screen. All right, and you can put as many in as you want, I just, as I just said. But the problem is, is none of these balls are actually moving. So let's take this, and I'm going to uncomment it by hitting Control slash, and then I'll cut it out and paste it in. Okay. Now I don't have, I don't have any x or y value, they're all part of these. So what I need to do is I need to say x i here and x i here. And I need to do y i and y i. And when I run this, you're gonna see something really weird. Now I want you to think about this before I run it, is each one of these values is getting the same x delta and the same y delta. So all of them are going to be moving in the same direction at the same speed. So if I do this, all of these are going to move downwards, and none of them are going to bounce off the side of the screen yet. So why don't they bounce off the side of the screen? Well, we haven't put our if statements back in. And if I, if I uncomment this now, it won't work because the x value here is doesn't exist up here. Uh, so let's let's just do one of our sides first. So let's take this this if statement and let's put it right here. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and change our x's. As we just said, we want to do this for every x. So we need to do as we're looping through, we're going to do it through for all seven of them. And the x delta is going to change each time that we hit the wall. Now this is the weird part. So you might not understand this, but once you see the program run, it, hopefully it'll become apparent. This x delta, there's only one x delta. So if it's going through the loop, eventually one of the balls is gonna hit either the right or the left wall. If one of those balls hits either the left or right wall, the x delta changes. And since there's only one x delta that we're using for all of these, it's gonna look really weird. So check it out. Mm, I think this one, oh, there you go. So one of them hit, actually hit off the screen down there. So you couldn't even see it. Uh, let me change one of these so you can see it a little bit better. So let's move this one over to 400. So it's gonna start further off. So it hits, see it hit the wall there. And now these ones are hitting the wall as well. But it's only activating for one. So that's because each one of these balls needs its own x delta. It needs to have its own variable. It can't, you can't share movement between all of these because the, the movement is gonna change the ball's direction when it hits the wall. And not all the balls are gonna hit the wall at the same time. So what we need to do is actually turn this also into an array. And we need to give every ball its own speed. So I'm gonna make this one, one, 1.5, 0 0.5, 2.5, and maybe 3. Uh, let's say 3. So that is all of these now have their own x value. So each one of these balls has index, this is index 0. Index 0 is 100, 100, and 2. Index 1 would be 50, 150, and 1. That means some balls are moving slower and some balls are moving faster. So how do I write that down here? Well, it's just easy as adding an i in for x delta. So I do this, 
and I do this. Now, if a ball hits the right or the left, it's going to move independent of the other balls. So let's check this out. The balls go. Notice that one bounces off the side of the wall, and we're good. All right. Now, they don't hit the bottom yet, but doing the, the bottom part is as easy as just copying what I did for the X delta part. I throw this in. I need to take off my comments. Uh, let's make this slightly easier here. Let me take these comments off down here. Oh, this, da, 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 da. There we go. All right. And let's pop this in right here. Some of you might be wondering why I'm not using Control T to to sort everything. Now you can use a button. You can use Control T to sort things, but I don't like what it does to my arrays up here when I do that. So I'm I'm doing it by hand instead of just letting processing do it. So if you ever need to auto format, it's also up here. You can type auto format or Control T. But as I just showed you it makes these arrays like this and I, I find that quite ugly I'd rather keep it like 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 this so uh, so let's throw this in here and I'm gonna need to do the same thing for my Y I'm gonna need to put a Y I and a Y I and I here and I here and if I run this oh I need to make this an actual array so let's make this an array and let's give it seven values. I'm going to give this one some negative values as well. Maybe negative 0 0.3, uh, maybe 2, 1, and let's make this last one the same for both sides. All right, so notice every array has seven elements. So we have seven elements in each one of these, and each index corresponds to one complete ball object. So we have the location and the movement of each ball. So all zero indexes correspond to one ball. So when I come through this loop at zero, all of these i's are going to be zero. So it's going to take these numbers out and replace them here. So really it's going to say ellipse 100, 100. So 100, 100. I want this ellipse at 100, 100. So 100 plus x delta i, which is 2 and y delta i, which is 2.5. So it adds 100 plus 2 and 100 plus 2.5. And then it comes down here and uses those same numbers for all of the if statements to check if we've reached the edge of the screen or not. All right, so this loop is doing everything seven times, and it's doing it for all of these balls and running all these if statements seven times and all of these additions seven times and drawing seven ellipses. All right, so let's check it out. I have a mistake in here, and the mistake is array out of bounds because I didn't put in enough here. So let's make that 1.3. All right, so now we've got balls going around, and all the balls are moving at different speeds, and it looks like we are successful. But I don't want to, I don't want to jump right in to to making a game with this quite yet because I want to go over arrays and, and kind of revise some of this stuff. Uh, to get some more practice. I also am going to show you another way to create arrays using random numbers and we'll, then we'll come back here and we'll apply it to maybe our X's, Y's or even our, our delta values. Okay, so come back for lesson 10 and we'll show you how to create even more balls and I'll show you how to do it a little bit better than hand coding everything up here, hard coding all of this. Alright, uh, thanks for watching and see you soon.